Morning. This is uh, Pete from uh, North Las Vegas. Uh, these are my two LR308 builds. If you've been following along with the uh, the build series videos, and there's quite a few of them now, and trying to get these rifles tuned to run on any type of ammunition uh, in colder temps, and try to get them set up to run on uh, more adverse type conditions. Uh, it's been a little bit challenging, but I think I think we're almost there. We're going to find out today. Um, I'll just give you the short version uh, Where we're at right now was the Wilson combat tactical hunters came drilled for 88 thousandths on the, uh, the gas port and I In the last video I opened up those gas ports to 92 thousandths maybe closer to 93 ish and um, In that last video I was was happy enough with my a5 buffer system from uh, heavybuffers.com that I went ahead and put another A5 on, on this rifle too. So these rifles are pretty much um, set up identical. And um, like I said, the original goal was to get these things to run on any type of ammunition, uh, expected temperatures in the part of the country where I live, which is maybe high teens, uh, low 20s. And uh, also to be able to run on uh, any type of ammunition. Uh, I was having most of my lock back on the last round issues with this stuff here. And this is brand new M80 load from Winchester. And I've talked about this in some of the other videos. I'm convinced that this ammunition, there's just something about it, it's not right. And it just may be my batch, my lot number, or maybe not all of the Winchester M80 is uh, underperforming stuff. But this, this certainly is, in, in my opinion. Uh, I'm also gonna try some uh, AAC. This was on sale from uh, Palmetto, uh, $14.50 for 20 rounds of 308 and I, I couldn't pass that deal up. So we'll see how this runs today. And this is some old 50 year old uh, Hurtenberger surplus. So I'm just gonna use this to, uh, for the first, first few shots, get the rifles kind of cleaned out, get the excess oil blown out of the gas tubes and, and that kind of stuff. And the goal today is to try to get locked back with the, uh, the junk Winchester on 10. And then that will still allow me to Give it a little bit more gas to compensate for temperature or a dirty chamber or whatever now if i can get locked back even lower on an eight then i'll really be happy but anyway that's the goal we're going to start off on 10. i'm going to blast some uh, some surplus through like i said just to get the rifles kind of cleaned out and then uh, i have just enough winchester here to try three different settings on the gas to see if i get locked back so anyway i hope i'm making sense here today Lancer, one of the few mags that works on my rifles. Okay, so we're uh, using the Hurtenberger 50-year-old surplus. I put the rifle speed on setting eight. So I'm hoping we'll we'll get locked back on, on setting eight using the old surplus. Felt like we got it. We sure did. Okay, so I'm gonna start off on uh, setting eight, uh, just one round at a time using this junk ammo. And uh, I, I, I don't think I'm gonna get locked back on setting eight, but let's find out. All right, one round of Winchester. Wow, I think I did get locked back. All right. Well, instead of giving it more gas, I'm gonna go down to setting six and see if I get locked back. Okay, setting six. Still getting locked back. I'm okay with that. Okay, setting four now.
<laughs> All right. <laughs> Finally cracked the code on this thing. One down, one to go. Okay, so here's a couple of surplus uh, burner rounds. I have it on setting eight. Lock back, I felt it. Let's make sure. Yep, we're good. Winchester gas setting six. Yeah, we got hold back. All right, I'm gonna go get out of setting four. Okay, Winchester, setting four. All right, so this rifle is functioning exactly the same as the other one. So by the time we got down to setting four on the gas, no lock back using the junk Winchester ammunition. Okay, so this is AAC uh, setting six. So we'll see what that does. And we did get hold back. Okay, so rifle build number one. We are good to go. Let's get rifle two back out here. Okay, rifle build number two, AAC ammunition, setting six. And we got hold back. Okay, so surplus on the left, um, Lake City in the middle, and AAC, Palmetto State Armory on the right. No signs of pressure. Um, looks like the uh, cratering issue is pretty much mostly gone compared to the last time I had these rifles out. Uh, it's dumping the brass at about 4.30. Four o'clock, 4.30. Um, I'm really happy with these rifles now. It's like I said at the beginning of the video, getting these things tuned to run reliably on anything. It's been a little bit challenging, but we are finally there. So I'll do a quick uh, commentary on, on the rifle builds and what I had to do to get these things to work right. And then the next time I bring these rifles out, we'll be testing for some, uh, some accuracy. Probably get out to at least 100 yards. It's about all I'm good for these days. All right, well, let's go over the rifles again. And uh, I won't go into the whole history and all the different videos I've made on these things, but we'll just talk about what I have now and what's working for my two rifles. Okay, seeing how both these rifles are identical, I'll just go over one of them. Um, Wilson Combat Tactical Hunter, 18 inch barrel, 11 and a quarter twist rate. Uh, it's stainless. Uh, rifle speed gas block using the shortest plunger at 0.898. And the barrel originally came drilled for 88 thousandths. And I drilled the gas port larger to 92 thousandths. Um, the gas tube is Armalite spec or DPMS. Um, I was able to use 15.5 inches on the gas tube. Um, one of the rifles has a 15.4. Um, the second build I used a 15.5 with no interference issues on the gas key on the, on the bolt carrier group. Also, um, if you're not familiar with rifle speed, uh, they use a straight gas tube with no bends. Okay, uh, new Frontier Armory receivers. 
Um, this is their second generation with all the lightning cuts, which I talked about, I think, in, earlier in the video. And this is the original. And you can see that this thing's pretty beefy. It's, it's a chunk. Um, these are low, low pattern or low profile uh, DPMS. There's two patterns for DPMS uh, Gen 1. There's the high profile and, and the low profile. These, these are the lows. And that's important for uh, mainly handguard selection. You want to make sure that you pick a handguard that uh, matches your upper receiver. These are both Midwest Industries. Okay, so I'm using Wilson Combat bolt carrier groups um, they come in at 18.6 ounces well, let me push the wow man there we go couldn't get my finger on it so Wilson combat bolt carrier groups nitrided now these come with the high pressure bolt design so they use a smaller diameter firing pin and a smaller diameter uh, pinhole on the bolt and that's supposed to reduce primer cratering and pierced primers uh, my understanding is it's more of a problem with uh, six and a half creed more than 308 but I decided to go ahead and run uh, high pressure bolts in these rifles and a5 buffer systems from uh, heavybuffers.com and I think I already mentioned in the video I have no affiliation with them other than buying his stuff and using it the buffer is, <coughs> excuse me, eight and a half ounces and uses a 308 rifle length spring. And I'll pop the receiver open and take a look at the, uh, the buffer real quick and I'll, I'll talk about that. Okay, so here's the uh, heavybuffers.com eight and a half ounce A5 setup using the uh, 308 rifle length spring. Um, also, the heavy buffers design has a more, uh, larger bearing surface here, and in my opinion, that helps to control your BCG, control tilt, and keeps your buffer from getting chewed up. Um, so, really happy with these. Uh, Wilson Combat Trigger Single Stage is my preference. Um, I do have some Geisley stuff with two stage. I'm not completely against two stage, but my preferred trigger is. Uh, Three to four pounds single stage is, is what I like. So anyway, um, like I said, I, I finally cracked the coat on these things. I feel they're gonna be reliable no matter what type of ammunition I, I shoot, no matter what the temperature is, whether the uh, the receiver gets a little dirty or the chamber gets a little derby, dirty, um, really uh, low underpowered, you know, cheap ammunition, whatever. I, I feel that these rifles are now 100% reliable. So anyway, like I said, next time we come out, I'll, I'll get these things out and we'll, we'll see what they do for accuracy. But anyway, right now, uh, yeah, beat North Las Vegas, over and out. Quick bonus clip. I, I forgot to mention how the A5 buffer uh, system felt with the eight and a half ounce buffer. Um, the, the 308 is very soft shooting now. It's, it's very manageable. And uh, a huge, huge difference between the Aero Precision 3.8 ounce buffer system and the carbine spring, which is now in my trash can. I think I showed throwing that away in my last video. And the heavybuffers.com carbine setup using the, uh, the shorter uh, stubby type buffer that was still heavier than the Aero Precision at six and a half ounces was a noticeable improvement. And I still have that, and I'll keep that as kind of a backup setup. But um, back to the eight and a half ounce A5 setup, um, it's turned these rifles into very, very soft, uh, manageable uh, shooters for for the recoil. All right, over and out for real this time.